Oh, praise to the most high. So tonight's topic is called Open Thou Mine Eyes. Open Thou Mine Eyes. That is tonight's topic. Okay. Let's open up with the book of Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 20. Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 20. Let's start there. The book of Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 20. Go ahead. Declare it in the house of Jacob and publish it in Judah, saying, so now this command is to Israel. Okay, at this point was to Judah, but today is to the 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead. Hear now this, O foolish people, mm -hmm. and without understanding, Go ahead. which have eyes and see not, which have ears and hear not. Read verse 21 again. The book of Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 21. Come Hear on. now this, O foolish people, and without understanding, which have eyes and see not, which have ears and hear not. So now the Lord is telling Jeremiah, like, listen, go to the house of Israel, and this is what you must tell them. They, have, they are foolish, okay? It says, hear now this, O foolish people, and without understanding, which have eyes and see not, which have ears and hear not. Okay? We're going to deal with this. Jump up to verse 19. Because the reason why he's telling us, he's, te he's commanding Jeremiah to go and teach our forefathers during this time. What was the problem? Read verse 19. Watch this. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 5, verse 19. Come on. And it shall come to pass, mm -hmm. when ye shall say, Wherefore doeth the Lord our God all these things unto us? You see that thing? So now it's going to come to pass where we're going to be asking the question. Why is the Lord doing these things unto us? Go ahead. Then shall thou answer thee. Like as ye have forsaken me and mm -hmm. served strange gods in your land. You see so that thing? Is that the problem. The problem is, the reason why the Lord is doing this to us is because of what? It is because we have forsaken the Most High, okay, and served strange gods. You understand? Back then it was in the land. In Jerusalem. Today, we are in the lands of our captivity. Guess what we are doing? We are doing the same garbage that we were doing. Breaking God's commandments and worshipping other gods. Go ahead. And serve strange gods in your land. Mm -hmm. So shall ye serve strangers in a land that is not yours. That's, that's what's going on right now. We are serving strangers in a land that is not ours. Jeremiah chapter 17. Jeremiah 17, verse 4. Watch this. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 4. Go ahead. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. Read. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in a land which thou knowest not. Mm -hmm. The lands of our captivity. That's the land that we, which we knowest not. Because South Africa is not the land that we knew. South Africa is the land which we know is not. Go ahead. For ye have kindled the fire in mine anger, mm -hmm. which shall burn forever. Because guess what? We discontinued from our heritage. You understand? The Lord said, okay, I'm going to deliver you into the hands of your enemies. You're going to be in the land of your enemies. And when you are over there, you will be saving other gods. Watch this. Give me that in Deuteronomy chapter 4. Okay. Deuteronomy 4 verse 27. Because the same thing that the Lord is telling Jeremiah here is the same thing that Moses was telling us in Deuteronomy chapter 4. Same thing. Okay, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 27. Read what you got. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verse 27. Go ahead. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations. Mm -hmm. And ye shall be left few in number among the heathen, whither the Lord shall lead you. He says, we shall be left few in number among the heathen, whether the Lord will scatter us. Why? Because we won't have power. We'll be at the bottom. Read. And they, ye shall serve gods. Mm -hmm. The work of man's hands. Go ahead. Wood and stone, which neither see, nor hear, nor eat, nor smell. You see that thing? Guess what? We're going to be just like those things. The gods that we worship in with the gods that we would worship in those lands, 
we're going to be just like them because it says you're going to save wood and stone. The wood goes into Christianity, the cross. You understand? The stone goes into the Kaaba stone under Islam. But it says what? Which neither see, nor hear, nor eat, nor smell. Guess what? We're going to be those dumb idols that we worship. We're going to be just like that. Deaf, dumb, and blind. That's what the Lord is teaching us. You understand? Go back to Jeremiah now. Chapter 5. Jeremiah 5 is 19. Read it. The book of Jeremiah. Chapter 5, verse 19. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass. When ye shall say, Wherefore doeth the Lord our God all these things unto us? Mm -hmm. Then shall thou answer them, Like as ye have forsaken me, and served strange gods in your land, so shall ye serve strangers in a land that is not yours. You see that thing? So shall we serve strangers in the land that is not ours. Deuteronomy 28 verse 48. Watch this. So shall we serve strangers in the land that is not ours. Those strangers is our enemies that we read about in Jeremiah 17 verse 4. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verses 48. Go ahead. Therefore, thou shalt serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. He says that thou shalt serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. Why? Because we decided to worship other gods. You understand? The most high God was no longer good enough for us. No more. Go ahead. In hunger. Mm -hmm. And in thirst. Read. And in nakedness. And in want of all things. Mm -hmm. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Until he have destroyed thee. So now what Moses is teaching us is that. Upon us saving our enemies, guess what's going to happen? We're going to save our enemies in hunger for basic, for food. You understand? We're going to save our enemies for food in hunger and in thirst. When you are thirsty, you're going to have to go to them. When you are hungry, you must go to them because they will control import and export of food. You understand? When you are thirsty, you will go to them. They will control import and export of water. You understand? It says, and in nakedness, when you want clothes, you must go to them. That's what he's saying right there. And in want of all things, anything that you need, you're going to have to go to them. Your wants and your needs will be provided by your enemies. So what does that make us? Prisoners. You understand? Because if you are in a prison, you are in jail, they dictate when you eat, what you wear, where you sleep. You understand? When to go outside to get some air. So on and so When to get your phone call. Who gets to visit you? And when they do, how long is the visit going to be? You understand? Everything is monitored. So that's what the Lord says. Because I'm not good enough for you, okay, that's, what, that's fine. This is what's going to happen to you now. You rather worship these gods. Guess what? I'm going to send somebody worse than you. I'm going to send somebody worse that is going to be over you. Then you're going to remember me in that day. You understand? Read verse 48 again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 48. Mm -hmm. Therefore... Thou shalt serve thine enemies, which the Lord no, shall no, send therefore, thee. Therefore shalt thou, therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. Go ahead. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Go Lord ahead. shall send against thee. Mm -hmm. In hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things. Go ahead. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck, until he have destroyed thee. So now our enemies, not only will they, will, 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 will we go to them for the want of all things, they're going to what? They're, our enemies will put yokes of iron on our necks. You understand? The chains that they put on our necks and our ankles, you understand? During the transatlantic slave trade, during the sub sahara slave trade, during the Silk Road slave trade. Okay? That's what they would do until we are mentally and until we are what? Until the chains are no longer necessary. That means what? The mind will be imprisoned with Christianity, Islam, politics, economics, and so forth, whatever, democracy. Now the mind is imprisoned with the, those philosophies that they've made up to keep us at the bottom. Watch this. Give me Sarah 39 verse 26. Remember now, it says, you're going to save your enemies for the basic needs in life. Watch this. Sarah 39 verse 26. Read what you got. 
the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 39, verses 26. Read. The principal thing for the whole use of man's life are water. Water. In thirst. Go ahead. Fire. Wonderful things. Iron. Iron. Wonderful things. And salt. You see, in hunger. Go ahead. Flower of wheat. In hunger. Go ahead. Honey. In hunger. Go ahead. Milk. Mm -hmm. Milk. In thirst. Read. And the blood of the grape. In thirst, go ahead. And oil. And oil that goes into what that goes into hunger. Go ahead. And clothing. And nakedness. That's what he's saying right here. These are the principal things for the whole use of man's life. Basic things. These are basic necessities. You understand? Go ahead. Verse 27. Watch this. All these things are good to the godly. Mm -hmm. All these things are for good to the godly. So to the sinners, they say, so to the sinners, they are turned into evil. You see what he's saying? He says, these things are good to the godly. You understand? To the godly, these things are good because you understand these are the basic needs that I need in order for me to survive on a day to day. Because this is survival mode. We're not in the kingdom. We're at the bottom. So it's survival time. You understand? This is not living. We're just surviving. We're not living. We're just surviving. So now he says, all these things are good to the godly. The godly are those that keep the commandments. The Lord says, I will take care of you if you do what I say. You understand? It says, so to the sinners, they are turned into evil. That's what you say the looting was about. The looting was about that. You understand? Because our people don't want to repent. You understand? They are holding on to their sins. You will bring the commandments. They're going to say, no, you hate black people. You can't make this stuff up. Okay, watch this. Give me Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 36. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 36. Because this is the judgment when we forsook the Lord and worship other gods in the lands of our captivity. You understand? Watch this. Nehemiah chapter 9 verse 36. Read it. The book of Nehemiah chapter 9 verse 36. Behold, we are servants this day. Mm -hmm. And for the land that thou gavest unto our fathers to eat the fruit thereof and the good thereof, behold, we are servants in it. So now, the same thing that we always read in Baruch 3 verse 8, Nehemiah is saying the same thing. He says, we are servants this day. Where are we at now? In the lands of our captivity. In the land which we know is not. You, we're saving other gods. You understand? As a nation. We're not talking about as individual. Because right now as a nation, we're waking up. You understand? Some more than others. But the Lord is waking up the ones that he wants, the ones that he knows they are going to keep the commandments when they hear this gospel. You understand? But he's saying we are servants this day because we're still in slavery. We're not in the kingdom yet. That's why for the basic things, the principal things for, uh, for, for, for men, guess what? We have to go to our enemies for those things. Those basic things. Okay, keep going. Verse 37. And it yieldeth much increase unto the kings whom thou hast set over us because of our sins. So now the Lord is, guess what he says? Um, he gave us land, you understand? He gave land to our forefathers so that they can pass it down to the children. But because of our sins, he says, okay, I'm going to set somebody over you, you understand? And the, the, the fruits of the land that you're supposed to reap, somebody else will reap those things. That's what he's saying. Because of our sins. Go ahead. Also, they have dominion over our bodies. That's it right there. They have dominion over our bodies. How do they have dominion over our bodies? How do they have control over our bodies? Because the body, there's basic needs that the body wants. That means there's basic necessities for the body. Food, clothing, water, you understand? Roof over your head, a job, so on and so forth. These are the basic things in life. Guess what? It says they have dominion over our bodies. What you eat, you have to go to your enemies for that thing. So they control what you, they control your body. They control your body, not just your body, but your mind, if you're not in this Bible. If you're not keeping God's commandments, they will what? They will control you. They will be in, their, in the driving seat. Whatever you think, whatever you say, how you say it, it will be based on what? What they have programmed in your head. Okay, come on. 
and over our cattle. Mm-hmm. They have control over our cattle. Read on. At their pleasure. Mm-hmm. And we are in great distress. We are in great distress right now. You understand? Because they took our resources from us. You understand? Because of what? Because of our sins. Like we read in, in verse 37. This is all because of our sins. Now go back to Jeremiah now. Jeremiah 5, verse 19 again. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 5, verse 19. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass, when ye shall say, Wherefore doeth the Lord our God all these things unto us? Mm -hmm. Then shall thou answer them, Like as ye have forsaken me, and have served strange gods in your land, so ye shall serve strangers in a land that is not yours. You see, that's what we read in Deuteronomy 28. That's what we read in Sirach 39. That's what we read in Nehemiah 9, verse 36. The same thing. Go ahead. Declare this in the house of Jacob and mm-hmm. publish it in Judah, saying. The house of Jacob. Now, the house of Jacob is all 12 tribes. But Judah is mentioned because Judah is the head tribe. You understand? Come on. Hear now this, O foolish people. You see now, now this, this is the prophet now. He says, hear now this, O foolish people. Go ahead. And without understanding. And without understanding. We have no understanding, the Lord is saying. He says, we dumb, we have no understanding. Read. Right? Which have eyes and see not. Which have eyes, we have eyes. Our physical eyes, we have them, but we don't see with those eyes. Go ahead. Which have ears and hear not. We have ears on the side of our heads, but we don't hear. You understand? We cannot hear spiritual. We cannot discern spiritual things. But you see the part where it says, hear now this, O foolish people, and without understanding. Okay? Because remember, he is tell, he's, he's bringing warning through the prophets. So, so it is today. Because some of you, you like to like, leave the Bible back then. No, 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 no. Today. You understand? Today. Because if you leave it back then, it's not going to be any benefit to you. You understand? And a lot of you, you have left the Bible back then. You're not applying it to today. So you are oblivious to what's going on right now because you're leaving it back then. Next verse. Go ahead. Fear ye not me, saith the Lord. Mm -hmm. Will ye not tremble at my presence? You see what he's asking? He's he's speaking through Jeremiah now. He says, fear ye not me, saith the Lord. He says, are you not afraid of me? That's what the Lord is saying. Because of the behavior, because of the way we are moving, says, are you not afraid? Go ahead. Will ye not tremble at my presence, Mm -hmm. which have placed the sand for the bound of the sea by a perpetual decree? By a perpetual decree, he says, he says what? Which have placed the sand for the bound of the sea by perpetual decree. That's why now when you see the ocean, the way that it moves, it cannot go beyond a specific line at sea. The Lord is the one that's doing that. Okay, go ahead. That it cannot pass it. Mm -hmm. And though the waves thereof toss themselves. You see that thing, the waves. When you look at the way you've been to the ocean before, you see the waves be tossing, they're moving. There's a spirit in those waves. That's the spirit of the Most High. Go ahead. Yet can they not prevail. You see that thing? Yet can, not, can they not prevail because guess what? The Lord is the one that is controlling even the waves of the sea. Go ahead. Though they roll, mm-hmm. yet can they not pass over it? You see what he's saying? He says, though they roll, they will not pass the decree that the Lord has set for them. You understand? That's why the waves will come and then they will get to it when the end of the, the, the show, the seashore, they they stop there, but every now and again, sometimes the Lord said, Mm-mm, "I don't want them to stop. They just gonna pass and destroy houses and go back." You see that because they are at the command of the Majesty on high. Now go back up to verse twenty one again. The Book of Jeremiah, chapter five, verse twenty one. Go ahead. Hear now this, O mm-hmm. foolish people. Read. And without you know understanding. Hmm. No, no. Read verse twenty three for me. Read verse 23. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 5, verse 23. Read. But this people had a revolting and a rebellious heart. Mm. 
Go ahead. They are revolted and gone. You see what the Lord is saying? He says they are gone. Good, their mind is gone. Their spirit is gone. That's what the Lord is saying. He says, but these people have a revolting and a rebellious heart. Because remember, he is asking the question in verse 22. You understand? He's so he's com- he's, this is a similitude. Our behavior versus the sea. He says, although the sea they roar, okay, he says, yet can they not pass over it? They can't. Because the Lord is the one that's telling the sea, do not go beyond this point. But when it comes to Israel, listen, it says, Israel, you tell them, don't go beyond this point. They will jump over it. That's what the Lord is saying here. That's why here, read verse 23 once again. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 5, verse 23. Mm -hmm. But these people had a revolting and rebellious heart. Come on. They are revolted and gone. They are revolted and gone, unlike the sea. Meaning the sea rose, but they, it will not go past beyond the decree that the Lord has said. But the children of Israel, they revolt, they go beyond the point of revolting. That's what he's saying. Read. Neither say they in their heart. Mm-hmm. Let us now fear the Lord our God that giveth rain. Mm-hmm. Both the former and the latter in the season. Read. He reserveth unto us the appointment, he reserveth unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest. So now that goes into the first, the, the Pentecost. But the point here is, it says, um, it says what? Neither say they in their heart, meaning we don't say this in our hearts, in our minds. Let us now fear the Lord, our God, that giveth rain. Because those are blessings. You understand? It says, we don't say that in our minds. Both the former and the latter, meaning the former and the latter rain. You understand? It says, in his season, he reserveth unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest. Guess what? Israel, they still don't what? They don't call their curses to mind so we can what? Repent and be right with the Most High. Why? Because our mind is gone, the Lord is saying. Jump back up to verse 21 now. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 5, verse 21. Mm-hmm. Hear now this, O foolish people. Read. And without understanding. Come on. Which have eyes and see not. Which have ears and hear not. So now I want to deal with the foolishness. Give me that in Psalms 5 and 5. Give me Psalms. He says, hear now this, O foolish people. Okay. Now we've, we've already gone through the characteristics. The foolishness is what we just read. You understand? The most that God has commanded every, every, every creation on this earth to move according to how he commanded it. You understand? But when it comes to Israel, guess what? We just decide to ignore any of the laws that the Most High God has given us on how to live. You understand? How to eat, what to say, how to conduct. We ignore all of that. You understand? That's why it says, this people, letting you know, he's talking about a specific people. You understand? That's why it says, this particular people right here, he says that what? They have a revolting and a rebellious heart. The mind. You understand? Now give me Psalms 5 and 5. Read it. The book of Psalms, chapter 5, verse 5. Go ahead. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Mm -hmm. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. So the foolish is those that what? The foolish is the workers of iniquity. The foolish is those that break God's commandments. That's what he's saying right there. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. The foolish will not stand in the sight of the Most High. You understand? Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. The foolish is those that commit iniquity. They break God's commandments. Give me that in 2 Timothy 2. No, no, give me Galatians 3. Galatians chapter 3 verse 1. Watch this. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 1. The book of Galatians chapter 3 verse 1. Mm -hmm. Oh, foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that ye obey, that ye should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ had been evidently set forth, crucified among you. So now the Apostle Paul is getting on the Israelites scattered in Galatia. He says, oh foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Because when does the bewitching come in? When the truth is not obeyed. When God's commandment is ignored. You understand? That's when the bewitching of the mind enters in. That's when Satan enters your spirit. You understand? Read that again, verse 1. 
the book of Galatians chapter 3 verse 1. Mm-hmm. Oh foolish Galatians, who have bewitched you? Oh foolish South Africans, who have bewitched you? Let's keep it real. Let's bring it to today. Oh foolish South Africans, so-called, who has bewitched you? You Israelites scattered in South Africa. Who has bewitched you? Read. Really? That ye should not obey the truth. That ye should not obey the truth. Give me that in Romans 2. Okay, Romans chapter 2. Give me Romans 2 real quick. Romans 2 verse 20. Let's get the truth. Oh, foolish Galatians, who have bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Read that. The book of Romans chapter 2 verse 20. Mm -hmm. An instructor of the foolish, a teacher of pains. Read. Which has the form of knowledge and of the truth in the law. You see that thing? So the prophets of God, their job is to do what? Is to instruct the foolish because the foolish, they are workers of iniquity. So that's why it says a teacher of babes. The foolish is the babes. You understand? Which has the form of knowledge, which is the Bible, and of the truth in the law. So the truth that we have not obeyed is found in God's commandments. You understand? That's what makes us foolish and that's how we become bewitched. You understand? Because of rejection of God's commandments. Give me that in 2 Timothy 2 now. Verse 23. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 23. Read what you got. Second book of Timothy. Chapter 2, verse 23. Go ahead. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid. Mm-hmm. Knowing that they do Knowing that they do gender stripes. So now what is the Apostle Paul teaching Timothy? He said, listen, but foolish and unlearned questions avoid. So the foolish questions, the foolish questions come from somebody that is unlearned. They are stumbling at the scriptures. You understand? Because for the past day, yesterday is it? Or today? Brothers, just be confused about Genesis 1 and 5. You can make this stuff up. You understand? Genesis chapter 1 verse 5 because brothers are not repenting in their walk. Okay? Because I've been seeing some dumb questions coming through. Brothers, don't, they don't know how to tell when the day begin. I'm like, I can't believe this stuff. Genesis 1 verse 5 that brothers be teaching about it all day at camp. But when it comes to update, don't know what it means. Unbelievable. Okay, read verse 23 again. Second book of Timothy, chapter 2, verse 23. Mm-hmm. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strifes. Because among the questions that are being asked, based on the brothers that know this stuff already, guess what? Because be, behind this is strife. Guess what? Give me the book of James real quick. Behind all these questions that are coming, because they don't believe this stuff. It doesn't matter how many classes are coming out, one ear out the other. You understand? One ear out the other. Because some of you think you, you, are, you have arrived already. You dumb as hell. Okay? We've got a lot of work to do. Our brothers and sisters are waiting for this truth. They are thirsty for this knowledge. You understand? Read it. James chapter 3 verse 16. Read it for me. The book of James chapter 3 verse 16. Read. For where envy and strife is. hmm there is confusion and every evil work. So the Lord is telling you, see what the Lord is saying? When there's en- where envy and strife is, there's confusion and every evil work. Because how we, are you going to be confounded? How do you get confounded by Genesis 1 and 5? Is because you don't apply the scriptures. It's that simple. There's no if or maybe, mm-mm. you don't apply the scriptures. And the spirit that's moving is the spirit of envy, you understand? And the spirit of strife evil work. There's some secret sins brothers don't want to repent from. And sisters too. Read again. The book of James chapter 3 verse 16. Read. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. Because the scriptures don't lie. The Lord is telling you what's working in the midst of this. Envy. Strife. This is the these these characteristics right here. These are the characteristics of what we read about in Numbers, with the Dathan, Abiram. You understand? Those that's the spirit that's moving. But because a lot of you don't believe what you are reading, when the things happen, 
you cannot put two and two together to say, mm, this is I see what's going on here. You understand? And a lot of you, you'll be hiding behind the new people. No, the new people are not going to understand. We just try. No, but you don't want to really admit that you don't understand this. There's no confusion on the website on how these things are written. If you understand Genesis 1 and 5, it's not just Genesis 1 and 5. When you read down in Genesis, the first chapter, it tells you when the day begins. At sundown, meaning at e not even sun, evening. When you don't see the sun no more, that's a new day. The new day begins when the sun sets. Simple. Do you understand? But brothers, because you don't apply the scriptures, it doesn't matter how many classes go out. Every single day there's a class go out. Brothers don't sit down and start, they don't apply. You understand? So that's why basic things like this, you are stumbling. Go back to where it was at. 2 Timothy 2, verse 23. 2 Book of Timothy, chapter 2, verse 23. Right. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid. Mm -hmm. Knowing that they do gender strife. You're knowing that they do gender strife. So the new brothers and sisters that are coming in, Yes, therefore, those ones right there, those are the ones that when the scriptures go out, they will understand because they are thirsty. That's why they are here. The Lord brought them here because the Lord saw something in them. But those of you brothers that have been here for a while, you think you know something. Listen, the minute you think you know, this is what the scriptures say about that behavior. Watch this. Give me the book of 1 Corinthians, okay? Give me 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Watch this. Because these scriptures, they just like they are all wives' tales. Like, like you read about in Luke 24, when Christ told them, listen, on the third day I'm going to resurrect. They didn't believe it. Because when they, when they were told that no, he resurrected. In there, the people thought, no, these are just old wives' tales. They didn't believe it. So if you think it was only for that time, no, it is today, 2021. Okay? First Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 11. Watch this. First book of Corinthians chapter 10 verse 11. Mm -hmm. Now, all these things happened unto them. You know what? Start, you know what? Start at, verse, start at verse 9. Start at verse 9. Read verse 9. First book of Corinthians chapter 10 verse 9. Mm -hmm. Neither let us tempt Christ. You see that thing? He says, don't tempt the Lord. Neither let us tempt Christ because our forefathers, they did that in the wilderness. Guess what happened to them? That first generation, they were all put to death. Read. Neither let us tempt Christ, as mm -hmm. some of them also tempted. Mm -hmm. And were destroyed of serpents. And they were destroyed of serpents. Those poisonous things in the wilderness, yes, because they tempted the Lord with evil. Read. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, mm -hmm. and were destroyed of the destroyer. You see, and they were destroyed of the destroyer. Because what? Mama, we went over at last, not even long ago. We went over at last, I think it was this week or last week, murmurs and complainers. Not even a week has gone by. Already this stuff is coming up. Unbelievable. Read. Now, all these things happened unto them for ensamples. You see that thing? He says, all these things, the stuff that you're reading about, the history in Exodus, in Numbers, in Deuteronomy, Leviticus and all Genesis, it was all it says all these things they happen unto us for an example. You understand? The things that are written for time were written for our learning that you must learn from the draw examples from these accounts. Listen, I don't want to follow, like I don't want to do what he did because I see what was the judgment. You understand? He says all these things they happen because of an example for us to learn today. Read. And they are written. For, for our admonition. You see that thing? For our warning. They are written to warn us. Read. Upon whom the ends of the world are come. You see that? Upon whom the ends of the world are come. Because back then, our forefathers, guess what? They didn't enter into that rest. They did not. Our foremothers, they didn't enter into that rest. Now he's saying, upon whom the ends of the world are come. The ends of the world are going to happen now because Esau is the last ruling Gentile empire in the last days. This is the last day right now. Okay, come on. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth, taketh heed, lest he fall. Read verse 12 again. First book of Corinthians chapter 10 verse 12. Go ahead. Wherefore, 
And him that thinketh, he standeth. Take heed, lest he fall. You see what he's saying? He says, therefore, he says, wherefore, because of the above that I would just said, it says, wherefore, let him that thinketh, he standeth. If you think you got it, it says what? He says, take heed, beware, lest you fall. Some of you are stumbling at Genesis 1 and 5. That's a huge red flag right there. Huge red flag. You understand? It's a big red flag. Because you, 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 because I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. The mind of the Negro, listen, you need to understand the mind of the Negro. You understand? Because the stuff I'm hearing is, no, no, on the document that Brother Zolani put, the document that I sent to Brother Zolani, it says the 23rd. Okay, that's fine. Now, but on the website, it says the 22nd. Fine. That was an error. My point is this. Here's the question. How is it that although it says the 22nd, brothers don't know what the 22nd begins? They don't know what it means. They have no idea what that means. Because guess what? Instead of remembering this, calling the scripture to mind, this, the day begins at sundown. Genesis 1 and 5 and down. Guess what? Mm -mm. They're going to remember, use their own mind because they don't apply the scriptures. Now all of a sudden they are confused. You are hiding about, you are hiding behind the new people that are, are you kidding me? No, because we don't want the new people to be confused. No, but you're the one that is confused. How do you not know when the day begins? You know, when I had this leg, it made me sick to my stomach. Why? Because what happens when we go out there? We're not going to look foolish out there. The most High God has entrusted us with this word. You understand? For us to go out there and teach the glorious gospel this day. So if you're stumbling at when the day begins, what else is next? Because brothers don't see counsel. You just think you know already. But yet you are studying. You cannot identify with anything in your life that you are reading in the scriptures. It's impossible. Impossible. There is no way that you can do four chapters a day and you cannot identify with anything that, that you are reading about in your life. It's impossible. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. You understand? Now, give me the book of Ecclesiastes. Give me Sirach 15 verse 7. Give me Ecclesiastes chapter 15 verse 7. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 15 verse 7. Mm -hmm. But foolish, but foolish men shall not obtain until. The, the hair is wisdom. Foolish men will not obtain wisdom. You understand? Because the foolish are workers of iniquity. They break God's commandments. They don't want to work hard to apply themselves, no matter how hard it is to overcome. Great. But foolish men shall not attain unto her, and sinners shall not see her. You see that thing? You're not going to see her. You read Genesis 1 and 5, but when it comes to you saying, okay, now I need to understand. You can teach, but you don't understand. You teach it, but you don't get it. That's why it says, foolish men shall not attain unto her, and sinners shall not see her. You see it, but you don't really see it. That's the point. You see that thing? You see it, but you don't really see it. You don't get it still. It has not sunk in your spirit. Give me that in Luke 9.44 because Christ talked about, he talked about this thing. Christ, he taught us, said, listen, this is what I want you to do when it comes to this book. Okay? Luke 9, verse 44. Read what you got. The book of Luke, chapter 9, verses 44. Read. Let these sayings sink down into your ears. You see what he's saying? He says, let these sayings sink down into your ears. So was Christ just, you know, passing time? He was just bored on what he was saying this. No, because the reason, guess what? The reason why he said it is because while the people that was for the, the followers, his followers, you understand? The majority of them, they are those that did not, it did, the things he was teaching, it, they didn't sink in their spirit. And he knew, as he taught, he knew that these ones is just one ear out the other. Guess what? I see it all the time. That's why I be asking how was the class? You understand? And when we would go to camp as before this level four adjusted thing, I we would have class during the week, right? We get to camp. I'll be asking brothers. And I'm not asking because, you know, no, me, when I ask questions, I observe things. I'll be asking questions. What did you, 
how did you find the classes brothers how was the class and all of that the things you hear brothers say you can see it didn't sink in the spirit it's just one year out the other you understand so i see it even today still it's still going on is one year out the uh, it's not sinking you understand it's like it's like water over duck's back that's how it rolls it rolls over like that Yes, that's why Christ said what he said here. Read verse 44 again. The book of Luke, chapter 9, verse 44. Let these sayings sink down into your ears. You see that thing? Let them sink. When, somebody, when something sinks, it goes down all the way to the bottom. You understand? Because when you eat it, you are learning this stuff. It goes down into your belly, your mind. That's why he said, give me John 7, verse 38. We coming back here. John chapter 7, verse 38. This is what Christ said. Okay? John 7, verse 38. Watch this. The book of John chapter 7, verse 38. He that believeth on me, as the scripture had said, Mm -hmm. out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. You see what Christ is saying? It says, he that believeth on me. Because there were those that did not believe on Christ. They didn't believe it. So now it says, he that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, meaning as it is written in the Bible, it says, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water, meaning understanding. Out of their mind shall flow good understanding. And they are going to be steadfast in their understanding. They're not going to stumble over when the day begins. Never. So now when you brothers are on the street, be teaching, you like a parrot. Because the parents don't understand nothing they are saying. They just repeat it. But they don't really get it. You, you see what I'm saying? So that's why it says, He that believeth on me. So if you believe on Christ, out of your mind shall flow rivers of living water. Why? Because from your belly, those things is, is, is a similitude for your mind. Because the word, the, 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 the words that Christ taught, they, they are sunken into your spirit now. Now when you speak it, we can tell this brother right here, this brother is applying what is written. You understand? Now, go back to Luke 9, verse 44 again. The book of Luke, chapter 9, verse 44. Mm-hmm. Let these sayings sink down into your ears. Read. For the Son of Man shall be delivered into the hands of men. Because they didn't believe it. They didn't believe it. They did. That's why it says, let it sink into your spirit. Because that's why when he rose, when he, when, we, when, when, when he was not found in the sepulcher, guess what? There was a, just a lot of beliefs here. Not, nobody believed it. Very few people believed that thing. But the majority didn't believe it. They just thought, no, it is just a fairy tale. Yeah. Somebody stole his body or something. That's what the scribes and Pharisees were saying. Because they didn't believe nothing that Christ was saying. Now, read Sirach again. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 15, verse 7. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 15, verse 7. Go ahead. But foolish men shall not attain unto her. Mm -hmm. And sinners shall not see her. And sinners shall not see her. That's why it says they have eyes, but they see not. Okay, watch this. Give me the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 16, verse 23. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 16, verse 23. Read. He that wanteth understanding mm-hmm. will think upon vain things. You see that thing? There will, he that lacks, the word, the word want means lack. He that lacks understanding will think upon vain things. Meaning what? Things that do not match up with what is written. You understand? They'll be confused because they won't see her. Read. And a foolish man erring imagineth follies. He says, and a foolish man erring, meaning sinning, they will imagine folly. They will imagine evil things, vain things. Their thought process is going to be what? Wicked. Their thought process is is going to be without sense. You understand? And that's what I'm seeing. Watch this. Give me that in Proverbs now. Chapter 9 verse 6. Proverbs chapter 9 verse 6. The book of Proverbs. Chapter 9 verse 6. Read. 
forsake the foolish mm -hmm. and live and go in the way of understanding. You see that part right there? It says forsake the foolish, meaning these foolish men. Forsake the foolish and live. Because how do you get life? Proverbs 7 verse 2, read it. The book of Proverbs chapter 7 verse 2. Go ahead. Keep my commandments and live. Mm -hmm. And my law as the apple of thine eye. And my law as the apple of thine eye. Keep my commandments and live. And live. So now in order for you to forsake the foolish and live, you have to be keeping the commandments so you can identify the foolish. You're not going to be able to identify the foolish if you're not keeping God's commandments. How are you going to do it? You will not be able to do it. That's why brothers don't check one another. No, they don't. Because everybody done confused. Okay? Go back to Proverbs now. 9 verse 6 again. The book of Proverbs chapter 9 verse 6. Forsake Read. the foolish and live. Read. And go in the way of understanding. And go in the way of understanding. The way of understanding is what? The commandments. You keep the commandments, you're going to see the way of understanding. You're going to walk in that way of understanding when you keep God's commandments. Okay? Watch this. Give me the book of Proverbs 10 verse 14. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 14. Watch this. The book of Proverbs chapter 10 verse 14. Come on. Wise men lay up knowledge. Wise men. What makes these men to be wise? Psalms 19 verse 7. This is what makes these men to be wise. He says, wise men lay up knowledge. Okay? Read that. Psalms 19 verse 7. The book of Psalms chapter 19 verse 7. Mm -hmm. The law of the Lord is perfect. The law of the Lord is perfect. The law. Go ahead. Converting the soul. Converting the soul. Go ahead. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Mm -hmm. Making wise the simple. So now the most that God has given us a way so that we don't look dumb, so that we are not simple. So the most that God said, you are dumb, you are stupid, don't worry, I got a, I got a solution. Keep my commandments, you will receive wisdom. You understand? But because Israel, we, we think we know something because we move with the spirit of pride when we reject God's commandments because guess what? We rely on our own wicked mind. The mind that is sick, the Negro will rely upon that mind. You can make this stuff up. You know that the mind is sick. That's why it says the whole head is sick. But you're going to rely on that sick mind to make sound decisions. You Unbelievable. I'm telling you right now. Unbelievable. Watch this. Okay, Sirach 1. Sirach 1 verse 26. The laws of God is what's going to make us wise. That's why wise men lay up knowledge. Because where do they get this knowledge from? The laws of the Most High God. Read what you got. Sirach 126. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verse 26. Come on. If thou desire wisdom. Stop right there. If thou what? If thou desire wisdom. You see that thing? You see the key word there, it says desire. That's the key word. If you desire wisdom. But if you don't desire wisdom, guess what? You're not going to see her. That's what we read in Sirach 15, verse 7. It says, but the foolish ones, they will not see her. Because wisdom will hide herself from you. Because you don't desire it. You think you know it already. Read again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 1, verse 26. Mm -hmm. If thou desire wisdom. If thou desire wisdom, go ahead. Keep the commandments. Keep the commandments. You desire wisdom, keep God's commandments. Read. And the Lord shall give her unto thee. The Lord will give her unto thee. The, but to the foolish, the Lord will not do that thing. It will be a stumbling block. You'll just be stumbling over simple things. You understand? But a lot of you, when you stumble over those simple, you don't even see that you are stumbling over those simple things. You understand? Because everything is just a joke. Okay? Non nothing is taken seriously. Everything is just a joke. We're here to kick it. Okay? Watch this. Go back to Proverbs, okay? Chapter 10, verse 14 again. The book of Proverbs, chapter 10, verse 14. Mm -hmm. Wise men, lay up knowledge. Wise men, lay up knowledge. Because what makes these men wise? Because they apply God's commandments. Read. But the mouth of the foolish is near destruction. 
You see that thing? Meaning you are near destruction. That's why the Lord in Jeremiah says, they are gone. Near destruction. Close to self-destruct. That's what the Lord is saying. He says what? Read that part again. But the what? But the mouth of the foolish is mm -hmm. near destruction. But the mouth of the foolish is near destruction. Because guess what? In the mouth of the foolish, you're not going to find wisdom. You are not going to find wisdom. But the foolish does not even know they lack that wisdom. But they will convince themselves and lie to themselves that they got it when they do not. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in Proverbs now again. 14 verse 7. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 7. Okay. I'm giving you the characteristics of a foolish mind. The characteristics of a foolish thought process. Okay. Proverbs 14 verse 7. Watch this. The book of Proverbs, chapter 14, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Go from the presence of a foolish man. Read. When thou perceive, when thou perceivest not in him the lips of knowledge. You see what the, this the Lord is teaching. He said, Listen, go from the presence of a foolish man. We know the foolish, according to Psalms 5 and 5, is the workers of iniquity. So he says, Go from the presence of a foolish man, meaning stay away from that brother, stay away from that sister. Okay. When thou perceivest not in him the lips of knowledge. Meaning what? Because when they open their mouth, is not in wisdom. No, it's confusion and the stumbling. Why? Because in their life, there's problems that they see in their life, but they don't want to address them. You understand? They don't want to address these problem sets. Because some of you I see, some of you, you are very sneaky. You understand? Some of you, you have that very that sneaky personality. You know, there's a scripture in Numbers. You know, I'm looking for it. I'll find it. That scripture, we was in the wilderness, right? There was this, the children of the strange, the, the, this one of this Israelite woman, she had a strange child, you know, a, a child from another nation, right? That child was among us. Guess what he was doing? He was just causing problem among the children of Israel. You understand? Some of you, you have that spirit. That sneaky spirit, that spirit right there. Yes, some of you got that thing. You understand? You have that. And there's people in the congregation that we've identified that you can speak through. That's the spirit of Jezebel. I'm seeing the spirit of Jezebel on the men. You can't make this stuff up. Because Jezebel used to speak through who? Jezebel spoke through her husband. Some of you men, you do that thing. You move with the spirit of Jezebel. Now we've got, not, we don't have Jezebels no more. We've got Jezamen. Jezamen in the camp. Unbelievable. Okay. Read that thing again. The book of Proverbs, chapter 14, verse 7. Read. Go from the presence of a foolish man. Come on. When thou perceivest not in him the lips of knowledge. You see that when thou perceivest not in him the lips of knowledge. When you don't perceive in him the lips of knowledge. He says, stay away. But some of you, you don't. You don't apply Leviticus 19, verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise reprove your neighbor. Some of you don't apply that. You don't apply Leviticus 5 and 1. You don't do it. Okay? You don't do it. That means if a new doctrine comes up, when, I think it was last week or something, we was dealing with this when we read the book of Acts 20. It says there's going to be grievous wolves coming in, entering in among you, not sparing the flock. You understand? When you see evil, you act like those monkeys. See evil, he says, see no evil, hear no evil. Say nothing. Okay? Watch this. Give me the book of Proverbs 15 verse 7 now. Proverbs 15 verse 7. Read it. The book of Proverbs 15 verse 7. Read. The lips of the wise disperse knowledge. Mm -hmm. But the heart of the foolish Doeth not so. You see that thing? The lips of the wise disperse knowledge. What is the knowledge? Give me Malachi 2 verse 7. Okay. Malachi chapter 2 verse 7. We read it earlier in Romans 2 verse 20. But let's read Malachi. Let's make it plain. Malachi 2 verse 7. Call it when you have it. The book of Malachi chapter 2 verse 7. Read. For the priest's lips 
should keep knowledge. Mm -hmm. And they should seek the law at his mouth. Come on. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. You see that thing? He says, for the what? For the, for the priest's lips should keep knowledge. At the, at the lips of a priest, because guess what? The priest is, goes into the Levites at this point. But guess what? Now the Lord is waking. The, the all 12 now is the priests. Well, when we get the kingdom, that's what we're going to be. But the point here is, at the lips of a priest, you're supposed to find knowledge. And you should seek the law at his mouth. So what is the knowledge? The laws of God. At the mouth of the foolish, you're not going to find that knowledge, which is God's commandments. But you're going to find vain things because that's what that mind is musing upon. That mind, the mind that wanted understanding, guess what they do? They will think upon vain things. That's what we read in Sirach. They will think upon vain things. So go back to Proverbs chapter 15, verse 7. The book of Proverbs, chapter 15, verse 7. Read. The lips of the wise disperse knowledge. Mm -hmm. But the heart of the foolish doeth not so. But the heart of the foolish doeth not so. The heart of the foolish, how will he be able to disperse knowledge when they don't have one? But if you lie to yourself, that's why the Apostle Paul says, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? The minute you stop obeying what is written in this book, guess what? You are going to be bewitched. You are going to look foolish. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in Proverbs 21 verse 20. Proverbs chapter 21 verse 20. The book of Proverbs 21 verse 20. Read. There is treasure to be desired mm -hmm. and oil in the dwelling of the wise. Read. But a foolish man spendeth it up now here's the thing you see you see read that again verse 20 so we can break this down we understand what the lord is saying here through solomon read the book of proverbs chapter 21 verse 20 come on there is treasure to be desired mm -hmm. and oil in the dwelling of the wise but a foolish man spendeth spendeth it up so now it says there's treasure to be desired this treasure is to be desired right is as an oil in the dwelling of the wise. So this treasure that is to be desired, this oil that will dwell in the in, in, um, in among the wise, it says, but a foolish man is going to spend up the treasure and the oil. Hmm. That's some heavy stuff. Watch this. It says there's treasure to be desired. What is this treasure that must be desired? Give me that in Proverbs 2. Okay. Proverbs chapter 2, we're going to get to the point. Proverbs chapter 2 and verse 4. Though the book of Proverbs chapter 2 verse 4. Mm -hmm. If thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasures. So it says, if thou seekest her, the her is wisdom, as silver. You must seek the for wisdom as, you are, as if you are searching for silver and searcheth for her as for hid treasures. So you must be looking for this wisdom of the Most High God like his hidden treasure because it is hidden treasure. So the treasure that he's making reference to in Proverbs 21 verse 20 is the wisdom of the Most High. That's the treasure. You understand? Go ahead. Then shall thou understand the fear of the Lord. Read. And find the knowledge of God. You see that thing? Now well, once you see, because in order for you to seek you're not going to, to seek means you must research. Seeking means you must search the scriptures. You understand? You have to search this. You need to, when, not just search, but you must apply the things that you found while you were searching. As you are, once you find it, guess what? You're you going to treat it like treasure. You understand? And that's when you're going to start to see the value in that treasure. Go ahead. Verse 6. For the Lord giveth wisdom. For the Lord giveth wisdom. Okay, come on. Which is the hair in verse 4? Which is the treasure in verse 4? Read. Out of his mouth cometh mm -hmm. knowledge and understanding. You see that thing? That treasure right there is the wisdom and understanding. That's the treasure. Now go back to Proverbs 21 verse 20. The book of Proverbs 21 verse 20. Mm -hmm. There is treasure to be desired. 
and oil in the dwelling of the wise. So this oil is going to be found in the dwelling of the wise. So now he says, this treasure, that he says, there is treasure to be desired. What is this treasure? Wisdom and understanding. That's the treasure that must be desired. You understand? And oil in the dwelling of the wise. So now he says, oil is going to be found in the dwelling of the wise. Give me that in Psalms 141 verse 5. The oil. What is this oil? Psalms 141 verse 5. The book of Psalms chapter 141 verse 5. Mm -hmm. Let the righteous smite me. It shall be a kindness. It shall be a the kindness. Is it, hold on. Is it the righteous? Let the righteous smite me and it shall be a kindness. Who's the righteous? Give me that in... Um, Give me that in uh, Romans chapter 8 verse 4. Give me that thing. Romans 8 verse 4. The book of Romans chapter 8 verse 4. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. The righteousness of the law. The law. So the righteous is those that keep the commandments of the Most High. The righteousness of the what? The righteousness of the law. Of the law, the righteousness of the law, go ahead, might be fulfilled in us. Come on, who walk not after the flesh, mm -hmm. but after the spirit. So, the righteous is those that walk after the spirit and not after the flesh. That's the righteous. So, those that keep God's commandments is those that are allowed to smite you, meaning to correct you. Go back to Psalms 141, verse 5. The book of Psalms, chapter 141, verse 5. Go ahead. Let the righteous smite me. It shall be a kindness. It shall be a kindness. Meaning that's kindness. When you're corrected by those that keep God's commandments, he says that's kindness. But guess what? Even though the scriptures are coming out, it's still going to be one ear out the other. You understand? Read. And let him reprove me. Let him reprove me. Correct me. Go ahead. It shall be an excellent oil. It shall be a what? It shall be an excellent oil. So that oil that we read about in Proverbs 21, that's the laws of God. The oil is God's commandments because the righteous uses what? Uses the law to correct you. That's the excellent oil. Go ahead. We shall not break my head. Mm -hmm. It's not going to break your head. It's not going to, you're not going to die. Go ahead. For yet my prayer also shall be in their calamities. So now, go back to where he was at now. Proverbs 21 verse 20. The book of Proverbs 21 verse 20. Mm -hmm. There is treasure to be desired. Read. And oil in the dwelling of the wise. And oil in the dwelling of the wise. So this treasure, we know what that treasure is. Wisdom and understand. The oil is the laws of God. You understand? The oil, the laws of God are going to be found in the dwelling of the wise. It says, but the foolish does what? Read that part again. But a foolish man spendeth it up. But the foolish man will spend it up. What does that mean? The foolish man will spend it up. They will spend up, they will spend the treasure and the oil. What does that mean? They will spend the treasure. They will spend the treasure and the oil. Watch this. Give me the book of Isaiah, okay? Give me Isaiah 55 real quick. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah chapter 55. Let's start at verse 1. The book of Isaiah chapter 55 verse 1. Mm -hmm. Ho, everyone the thirsty, come ye to the waters. He says, come and ye, ye to the what? Come ye to the waters. Come ye to the waters. Go ahead. And he that hath no money, mm -hmm. come ye, buy and eat. Yea, Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. So now watch this. You see that part when it says, um, it says, come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come, it says, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Keep going. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread? Mm -hmm. And your labor for that which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let and your soul what? 
and eat ye that which is good. And eat ye that which is good. Go ahead. And let your soul delight itself in fatness. Now watch this. We coming back here. Give me the book of Proverbs 23. Proverbs 23. I think this is the one that I was really looking for. Okay. Um, read verse 23. Proverbs 23, 23. That's the one I want. Okay. But we're going to go back to Isaiah 5 and 1. Okay. Read that. Proverbs 23, 23. Read it. The book of Proverbs 23, verse 23. Go ahead. By the truth. Mm -hmm. And sell it not. And do what? And sell it not. And sell it not. What does that mean, sell it not? Because, but the foolish will spend it all up. He says, buy the truth, meaning learn this truth. Sell it not means what? Don't lose the understanding of what you learned. You see that thing? Buy the truth, meaning learn it. Sell it not. Don't lose the understanding. Read that again, verse 23. The book of Proverbs, chapter 23, verse 23. Go ahead. Buy the truth. Mm -hmm. And sell it not. Come on. Also wisdom. Mm -hmm. And instruction and understanding. You see that thing? So the truth, yeah, the truth is the laws of God, which will give you what? Wisdom, instruction, and understanding. So it says buy this truth, meaning learn this truth, sell it not. Don't lose it. Don't spend it up. You understand? Now, go back to Isaiah 51, 55 verse 1. Isaiah 55 and verse 1. The book of Isaiah chapter 55 verse 1. Read. Ho, everyone that thirst ye, come ye to the waters. Read. And he that hath no money, come mm -hmm. ye, buy and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. You see that thing? Meaning what? Without, he says, Come and buy, he says, he that has no money. You don't need money to learn this. You just need your time. The Lord needs you to sit down and guess what? And go over the scriptures and sacrifice your time and resources to learn this truth. That's what the Lord is looking for. Once you learn it, he says, sell it not. But the foolish will do what? They will spend it all up. Now go back to Proverbs 21, verse 20. The book of Proverbs, chapter 21, verse 20. Come on. There is treasure to be desired. Mm -hmm. And oil in the dwelling of the wise. Read. But a foolish man spendeth it up. You see that thing? But, the, but a foolish man is going to spend it up. They will buy it. They will sell it. They will sell it when the scripture says, sell it not. But the foolish will say, mm -mm, I'm going to sell this thing. You see that thing? Because they don't value it. He says, I'm going to sell it. I'm going to spend it all up. That's what the Lord is teaching us right here. The most High God is teaching us, listen, you have this understanding, hold on to it. But a lot of you, you are taking it for granted because you, you think, no, I'm just going to go to YouTube and find it. There are going to come a day when none of these things are available. You have, it has to be committed to memory. What's going to happen on that day? Because those days are coming where they'll be shutting down YouTube and all of that, taking Bibles. You need to commit it to memory to know when the feast days are. You understand? Okay. When tabernacles is going to happen. When so, some of you are just in lala, you are just relaxed. That's why Christ says, let these things be sunk in your spirit. So you know. So that the day of your, the day of tribulation right there, you're going to know, in memory, you'll know, mm, on this day, is this is, I'm going to celebrate this type of a thing. On that day, is that high holiday. On that day, you must know those things. But some of you, you don't take it for, because you just think, I'll just go to YouTube for this stuff. There's going to come a time when all these YouTube stuff will be gone. Okay? Watch this. Give me, go back to Jeremiah now, chapter 5, verse 21. Jeremiah 5, verse 21. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 5, verse 21. Mm -hmm. Hear now this, O foolish people, and without understanding. And without understanding. Have... Now we understand what Jeremiah means when he says, Oh, hear now this, O foolish people. We just went through our whole plethora of scriptures of what it means to be foolish. The characteristics of a foolish mind. 
a mind and a mindset. You understand? And without understanding, they have no understanding. Give me that in Psalms 111.10 because that's what, I, that's what was posted on the group. You ever notice? You see, what happens is that when correction comes out, when the truth is put in your face, you're not going to see all praises. I didn't see that. But everything else, all praises, all praises. But when, when that thing came out, that correction on the group, don't nobody said all praises. So when the correction comes, now we don't say all praise to the most high God no more. Mm -hmm. Double-minded. We what you got. Okay, Psalms 1, 11 and 10. Read it. The book of Psalms, chapter 111, verse 10. Read. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Remember what we read in Jeremiah 5. You understand? It says, do you not fear me? That's what the Lord was asking through Jeremiah. Yet, David is telling, listen, you better fear the Lord. The fear of the Lord is what? Read verse 10 again. The book of Psalms, chapter 111, verse 10. Come on. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Go ahead. A good understanding. A what? A, a good understanding. So now this is about understanding. It says a good understanding. This is not just any type of understanding. Mm -mm. A good understanding. A good understanding. If you have a good understanding, you will know exactly when the day begins. When you see date, you're not going to be confused. But because you don't have a good understanding, some of you are still window shopping. You don't believe nothing the scripture says do. Guess what? You don't have a good, you're not going to have a good understanding. It doesn't matter how many scriptures you can quote. You're not going to have a good understanding if you don't humble down and apply. You're not going to have a good, you will have some understanding, but you're not going to have a good one. You won't have a good understanding. Read again, verse 10. The book of Psalms, chapter 111, verse 10. Go ahead. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Come on. A good understanding mm -hmm. have all they that do his commandments. You see where good understanding comes from? When you do the commandments. When you do the commandments of the Most High God, you will have a good understanding. You will have a sound mind. Your, your, your understanding is going to be steadfast. You will be steadfast in your understanding. But as long as you are not rooted and grounded in the scriptures, guess what? You are going to be tossed to and fro like a rolling axle tree. Read again. The book of Psalms, chapter 111, verse 10. Read. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Come on. A good understanding have mm -hmm. all they that do his commandments. Read. His praise endureth forever. He's, he's, listen, the praise of the Lord endures forever. Okay? So whether you do the commandments or not, the praise will endure forever. Understand that thing. So it says, a good understanding have all they that do his commandments. So give me that in Sirach 5, real quick. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 is 10. Okay? Sirach chapter 5 and verse 10. No, no. Read verse 9. Start at verse 9. The book of Ecclesiastic is chapter 5, verse 9. We know not with every wind. You see that thing? That's what I'm seeing with a lot of you. You are winnowing with every wind. That's why something as basic as Genesis, the evening and the morning as the first day. Stumbling. Read verse 9 again. The book of Ecclesiastic is chapter 5, verse 9. Read. We know not with every wind. We know not with every wind. Go ahead. And go not into every way. And go not into every way. Read. For so doth the sinner. For oh. the dumb. Wait, 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 wait. For so, so doth the what? For so doth the sinner. You see that thing? For so doth a sinner. The subject matter here is that sinful man. That sinful sister. It says, so doth a sinner. The foolish man or that foolish woman. You understand? The workers of iniquity, they don't want to repent. So does a sinner that what? So does a sinner that has a double tongue. Very sneaky. So does a sinner that have a double tongue. You see that thing? Tailbearing. Causing confusion. That's what we read in James. 
strife, foolish questions. Which what? Those that are learned, you're going to pick up mm, some evil going on here. Right? Be steadfast in the understanding. That's the commandment, by the way. That's the law. That's not a suggestion. It says, be steadfast in your understanding. Be rooted and grounded. Read. And let thy word be the same. And let your word be the same. Be steadfast in your understanding and let your word be the same. Why? Because you understand, you, 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 you understand the script. You have a good understanding now. So you are rooted and grounded. That's why it says, be steadfast in your understanding. Be rooted and grounded. You understand? Ephesians 3. Watch this. Give me the book of Ephesians chapter 3 real quick. Okay. Let me see. Ephesians 3.16. Read that for me. Ephesians the chapter 3. Of... Verse 16. Read it. The book of Ephesians chapter 3 verse 16. Go ahead. That he would grant unto you according to the riches of his glory. According to the riches of his glory. The glory of the kingdom. The riches that comes with the kingdom. Before that, it also goes into what? Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. If you read Romans 11, 33. Romans 11, verse 33. Go ahead. To be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. You says you must be strengthened with, by his might. You must strengthen with his might by his spirit. Meaning the laws of God. According to John 6, 63. In the inner man. Who's the inner man? That will be Jesus the Christ. Next verse. Go ahead. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. You see that thing? Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. So, meaning what? You must have the faith in Christ. Not in the animal no more. No, in the Messiah. The sacrifice that he made plus keeping of the commandment. That's how Christ is going to dwell in your heart by faith. Because you, you what? You accept the sacrifice that he made plus keeping of the commandments so you can receive the kingdom. Go ahead. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. Mm -hmm. That ye being rooted and grounded in love. You see that? That's the key right there. Steadfast. Steadfast. That's what he's talking about. Be rooted and grounded in love. You understand? So to be steadfast in your understanding, you have to be rooted and grounded. That means you must have a good ground. You understand? You must, you must take root. Not only must you take root, but you must be sitting on a good ground. Like it said, give me that in Mark chapter 4. Watch this. Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4 and verse 20. Watch this. It says you must be rooted and grounded in love. Watch this. Mark 4 verse 20. Read it. The book of Mark chapter 4 verse 20. Go ahead. And these are they which are sown on good ground. You see that thing? These are they which are sown on good ground. So if you are rooted, yes, you must be rooted because you must take root because you are going to be watered with the word of God. Now you must take root. As you are taking root, the, the root must, the, 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 tree must the, that the tree must take root on a good ground. You understand? That good ground, the foundation is Jesus the Christ, the black Messiah. He is the good ground. Go ahead. Come on. Verse 20 again. Read again. The book of Mark chapter 4 verse 20. Come on. And these are they which are sown in good ground. Mm -hmm. Such as hear the word and receive it. Read. And bring forth fruit. Some 34, some 60, and some 100. You see that thing? Meaning what? The fruit of, they have this fruit of the spirit. Like we read about in Galatians 5. They have the fruit of the spirit because they're what? They are rooted and grounded in love. Second John verse 6. Read that. Let's understand what is this love he's talking about. Rooted and grounded in love. Read it. Second John verse 6. Second book of John verse 6. Mm -hmm. And this is love. That we walk after his commandments. Read. This is the commandment. That as you have heard from the beginning, ye should walk in it. You should walk in it. So guess what? The love is talking about that we must be rooted and grounded in is the commandments of the Mosai. That's the good ground. 
must be rooted and grounded in love. You see that thing? Go back to Sirach now. Chapter 5 is 10. Again. The book of Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 5, verse 10. Read. Be steadfast in thy understanding. You see that thing? You must be steadfast in your understanding. And you must have a good understanding for you to be steadfast. That's what we read in Psalms 111 and 10. It says, a good understanding have all they that do his commandments. So in order for you to be steadfast in your understanding, guess what? You must be keeping the commandment to get a good understanding so you can be steadfast in that good understanding. Okay, come on. And let thy word be the same. And let your word be the same. You must be saying one thing today, tomorrow you send something different. No, today the day begins at sundown. You understand? At evening. And then the next day, I'm confused. I don't know where it's, when it starts. I'm just lost. There's a mistake on this. No, no, there's no mistake. If you understand what the scriptures say, guess what you will do? You'll know exactly, oh, I understand what this means. Because brothers will say, say, no, it's Saturday. They have no idea when it begins. At evening. Because Israel is slow. We would say Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. Why? Because we're doing this because Israel is slow. Because when I say Saturday, you should know already according to Genesis 1 and 5 when that Friday, when Saturday begins. At evening. Simple. But guess what? Brothers, be confused about that. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of, um, give me Sirach 21. Okay. Sirach 21 verse 11. Ecclesiasticus chapter 21 verse 11. Read that. The book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 21 verse 11. Read. He that keepeth the law of the Lord getteth the understanding thereof. You see that thing? If you keep God's commandments, you will receive understanding. A good understanding you will receive. Go ahead. And the perfection of the fear of the Lord is wisdom. The perfection of the fear of the Lord is wisdom because the more you apply, that's how you be, you'll become perfect. Okay? Watch this. Give me... Jump down to verse 16. Sarah 21 verse 16. Read that. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 21, verse 16. Go ahead. The talking of a fool is like a burden in the way. Mm -hmm. But grace shall be found in the lips of the wise. You see that thing? But grace shall be found in the lips of the wise. We know what grace is. What is grace supposed to teach you? Grace is supposed to teach you to deny ungodliness. How do you deny ungodliness? You apply the scriptures. You see that thing? Applicate because grace means the law. You understand? But the law shall be found in the lips of the wise. You see that? That's what grace is, the law. Grace will teach you God's commandments according to Titus 2 verse 11 and 12. Watch this. Give me Proverbs 4 verse 7. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7. The book of Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7. Read. Wisdom is the principal thing. It says wisdom is the principal thing. Meaning wisdom is the main important thing. Wisdom is the main thing. Watch this. Go ahead. Wisdom is the principal thing. Come on. Therefore, get wisdom. You see that thing? Wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is the main important thing. Therefore, get wisdom. Watch this. Go ahead. And with all thy getting, get understanding. You see that thing? With all thy getting, you getting all this wisdom, you must have understanding of the wisdom you got. And the way to receive that understanding, you must keep the commandments of the Mosai. Because wisdom will tell you why certain things are done the way that they are done. Wisdom will tell you, will give you the answers to the wise. That's what wisdom will tell you. You understand? It says, yes, wisdom is important, but with all you getting that wisdom, get understanding as well to go with that wisdom. That's what he's saying right there. But the, in the mouth of the foolish, you're not going to find wisdom. You're not going to find grace, which is what? The com keeping of the commandments. Because that's what grace will teach you, to deny ungodliness. Now let's go back to Jeremiah 5, verse 21. Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 21. Let's go back there. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 5, verse 21. Go ahead. Hear now this, O foolish people. 
mm-hmm. and without understanding. Read. Which have eyes and see not. Which have eyes and see not. Go ahead. Which have ears and hear not. Meaning what? They are deaf and they are deaf and blind. He says they have eyes but they see not. Which have ears but hear not. That's what we read in Luke 9. That's why Christ said what he said. You understand? So now watch this. He says, which have eyes but see not. Give me the book of Isaiah 29 verse 10. You know what? Hmm. Give me Isaiah 6 and 9. He says, which have eyes but see not. I'm going to give some examples. You understand? Because in order for you to see the things that are the spiritual things, you have to have faith. And your faith is going to be proved by your works, which is application of God's commandments. Watch this. Give me Isaiah 6 and 9. Okay. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 9. Read that. The book of Isaiah chapter 6 verse 9. Mm -hmm. And he said, Go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not. You see that thing? It says, says, Go and tell these people. Go and teach them. But while you are teaching them, I don't want them to hear. I want them to hear, but I don't want them to understand. That's what he's saying. Hear ye indeed. They hear what you are saying but they do not going to understand what you are saying. Read. And see ye indeed, but perceive not. You see that thing? They don't perceive what they are seeing. Yeah, they see it, but they don't really get it. Yeah, I see it, but I still don't get it. Mm -hmm. Because guess what? Why is that? Why why, why that is? Watch this. Go back to Jeremiah's. Watch this. We coming back here. Jeremiah chapter 5. Read Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 25 now. Watch this. Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 25. The book of Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 25. Mm -hmm. Your iniquities have turned away these things. Mm -hmm. And your sins have withholden good things from you. You see what the Lord is saying? Your iniquities have turned away these things. And your sins, okay, have withholden good things from you. Watch this. Jump up. Read, 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 read verse 24. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 5, verse 24. Come on. Neither say they in their heart. Mm -hmm. Let us now fear the Lord our God. Read. That giveth rain, both the former and the latter. Stop right there. That giveth what? That giveth rain. Mm Mm-hmm. Both the former and the latter. So now it says, it says the Lord gives rain, both the former rain and the latter rain, right? Watch this. Hold this. We're coming back. Give me the book of Deuteronomy, okay? Give me Deuteronomy chapter... Deuteronomy chapter... Deuteronomy chapter 8, start at verse 5. Deuteronomy 8 verse 5. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 8, verse 5. Go ahead. Thou shalt also consider in thine heart Mm -hmm. that as a man chastiseth his son, so the Lord thy God chastiseth thee. So chasteneth thee. So the Lord is correcting us. He's chastising us because he is our father. Watch this. Go ahead. Therefore, thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God. Uh That's how the Lord chastises us. By commanding us to keep his commandments. When we don't, we get punished for that. Read. To walk in his ways. Mm -hmm. And to fear him. Read. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land. That's the promised land. The land of Israel. Go ahead. A land of brooks of water. Mm -hmm. A land of brooks of water by those four rivers that we read about in Genesis, the second chapter. Go ahead. Of fountains and depths Mm -hmm. that spring out of valleys and hills. Read. A land of wheat and barley and vines Mm -hmm. and fig trees. Read. And pomegranates. A land of olive oil and honey. Read. A land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness. Without scarceness, we're going to eat bread without scarceness. Now, this is in the kingdom. When That's when the Lord is blessing us. Because for all of these, you know, wheat, barley, vines, fig trees, 
pomegranates, land of oil, olives, okay, honey and so forth, is because the Lord would have given us what? The former and the latter rain upon the land. That's the blessings. So because of our sins, the Lord says, your iniquities have we withholding these things or have turned away these things. Rain, because rain brings, brings what? Blessings. We are able to plant. The land is fertile and so forth. We can harvest and so forth. Take care of our families and whatever. That's what he's making reference to in, in Jeremiah 5. Go ahead. A land of oil, olive, and mm -hmm. honey. Read. A land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness. Read. Thou shalt not lack anything in it. Mm. Come on. A land whose stones are, are iron. And out of whose hills thou mayest dig brass. Read on. Come on. These are now minerals upon the earth. Come on. And upon whose hills thou mayest dig brass. When thou hast eaten and art full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good of, for the good for the good land which he had given thee. You see that thing? Now these are blessings. So now because of our sins, the Lord has turned these good things from us. He took them away. Go back to Jeremiah's now. Chapter 5, verse 25 again. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 5, verse 25. Your iniquities have turned away the your iniquities have turned away these things. And your sins have withholden good things from you. He says, and your sins have done what? And your sins have holden good things from you. And your sins have withholden good things from you. Go ahead. For among my people are found wicked men. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Read that again, verse 26. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 5, verse 26. Go ahead. For among my people are found wicked men. For among my people are found wicked men. Black ashy demons. Go ahead. They lay wait as he that set its snares. Mm -hmm. Set a trap, they catch them. They catch men. They catch men, meaning what? Their job is to put a stumbling block in front of other brothers and sisters. You understand? Because they don't apply, they don't have the spirit of charity. Love your neighbor as yourself. Okay? So now what we're reading here. You see when it says your iniquities have turned away these things and your sins have withholding good things from you. Those good things, guess what? Those are the promises. When we keep the commandments and we are upon our land, the Lord blesses us. We are able to take care of ourselves, you understand, and our families and so forth. That is what we are reading. But what I'm showing you is when you look at what we read in Proverbs 4 verse 7, it says, with all thy getting, get understanding. You understand? The most that God is saying, listen, make their eyes heavy that they don't see nothing. They hear, but they cannot understand. They see, but they cannot perceive. What did the Lord do? The most that God has blinded them. Go back to Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah 6 verse 9 again. The book of Isaiah chapter 6 verse 9. Read. And he said, Go and tell this people, hear ye indeed, but understand not. Go ahead. And see ye indeed, but perceive not. So the Lord is doing this thing. He says, I want them to hear, but I don't want them to understand. I want them to see, I don't want them to perceive what they are seeing. Because of what? Because of our sins. The, our sins have withholding good things from us. Because guess what? If you, the Lord can give you eyes to see, and ears to hear, guess what you will do? Next verse. Watch this. Make the heart of this people fat. You see that thing? Make the heart of this people fat, meaning their mind. Make them to be fat. They don't understand nothing. Read. And shut their eyes. You see that thing? Close their eyes. Come on. Lest they see with their eyes. Hold on. It says make, it says make, their, make their ears heavy. Read verse 10 again. The book of Isaiah, chapter 6, verse 10. Come on. Make the heart of these people fat. Mm -hmm. Make their ears heavy. Make their ears heavy, read. And shut their eyes. Close their eyes, come on. Lest they see with their eyes. So the Lord is saying, I don't want them to see with their eyes. Go ahead. 
and hear with their ears and understand and with their heart. Hold on, and hear with their ears because I don't want them to hear the spiritual things that they're supposed to hear. Go ahead. And understand with their heart. Read. And convert and be healed. The Lord says, I don't want that right now. I'm, I don't want that right now. Okay. I'm going to put a stumbling block before you. He says, I don't want that right now because once you can do that, let, he says, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and convert and be healed. Because once you convert, it's because you understand what you're supposed to do. Guess what happens? What does that make you? You become eligible to receive the kingdom on, of, or the kingdom of heaven that shall be established upon this earth. You will get the kingdom. The Lord says, I don't want that. Now, I want them to I want them to go around in circles. You understand? He says, that's what I want right now. Right now, I want you to go around in circles until I'm satisfied with your punishment. Then I'll open your eyes. Watch this. Give me 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 8. Watch this. Let's see what happened in the past. Okay? 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 8. Second book of Kings, chapter 6, verse 8. Read. Then the king of Syria warred against Israel. So now this is the Syrian king waging war against northern kingdom. Go ahead. And took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. Now he's saying he's setting camps now all over. He says, In such and such a place, I'm going to set my camp, meaning his armies. Okay, go, go ahead. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. So the man of God, jump up to verse 1 so we know who this man of God is, that warned northern kingdom to not to go in such and such a place, because guess what? The Syrians have set up camps to wage war against Israel. Go ahead. Verse 1. Second book of Kings chapter 6 verse 1. And the sons of the prophets said unto Elisha. Now, now Elijah is gone. Now remember Elijah in the, the fifth chapter. No, no. The, uh, in Second Kings chapter 2, Elijah was taken with a chariot. You understand? Now Elisha is the one that is now doing, he's doing mighty works now on earth after Elijah is gone. So now Elijah is the prophet at this point. You understand? Read that again, verse 1. Second book of Kings, chapter 6, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And the sons of the prophets said unto Elisha, Behold now, the place, where, the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. Now jump down to verse 8, verse 9 again. Now we understand who the man of God is. Elisha. Read. You know what? Second, Give me second, hold on. Second Kings five is twenty. Let's get some more on this. Second Kings five is twenty. Second Book of Kings chapter five is twenty. Mm -hmm. But Gehazi, Gehazi. This is Elisha's servant. Read. The servant of Elisha, the man of God. You see that thing? The servant of Elisha, the man of God. Go back to Second Kings six, verse nine. Now again. Second Book of Kings chapter six, verse nine. Read. And the man of God mm -hmm. sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. Read. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him of, mm -hmm. and saved himself there, not once, not twice. You see that thing? So now, the king of Israel, he followed the command of Elisha. He said, listen, don't go there. He did not, and he saved himself from the Syrians. Next verse. Go ahead. Therefore, the heart of the king of Syria was so troubled for this thing. Now he's what? He's troubled now, he says. Because in his mind, he was going to what? He was going to wage war, and he's, he was going to win. That's what he, that was his mindset. Go ahead. And he called his servants and said unto them, mm -hmm. Will you not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? You see that thing? Now in his mind he's thinking there's a spy in the midst. Because how does that man of God know this thing? 
You understand? How did, how did the king of Israel find this out? There's a spy among us. That's what he's thinking. Go ahead. And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha, the prophet that is in Israel, telleth the king of Israel the words that, the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. So now this one of these servants, one of the king's servants, he said, listen, there's a prophet in Israel. His name is Elisha, and he's the one that he told the king what you are planning to do. The, your war strategies, he knows about them, even though he's not among us, but he's away. Because who's, who's giving these things to Elisha? The Lord is doing that. You understand? Go ahead. And he said, go and spy where he is. Mm -hmm. That I may send and fetch him. And it was told and it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. He is in Dothan. Go ahead. Therefore sent he to the horses and chariots and a great host. Meaning an army. Now he's going, because he remember he's told, they told him, listen, he's in Dothan. So go over there. You're going to find him there. That's what they told him. Now he's, he's coming with an army now. You understand? Read. Right? Second Book of Kings, chapter 6, verse 15. And when the servant of and when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, and host compassed the city both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? So now remember now the read verse 14, read verse 14 and 15 together. Second book of Kings, chapter 6, verse 14. Mm -hmm. Therefore sent he to the horses and chariots and a great host. Read. And they came by night and composed the city about. So, so now they, have come, they, are, they are surrounding the city now. Remember, the king of Syria has got a great host, an army. You understand? He is coming with, he is coming, listen, he is coming for war because he's mad as hell because of what they said about what Elisha did. You understand? Now they are surrounding the city. Remember, Elisha the Elisha's servant was his name Gehazi. Okay. And those brothers, if you read verse 1, 2 Kings 6. Now read verse 15 now again. Second book of Kings, chapter 6, verse 15. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, and host composed the city both with horses and chariots. So now they are seeing, they are seeing that now we are surrounded. That's what they are seeing. You understand? It says, when he was risen early and gone forth, behold, and host compassed the city both with horses and chariots. Go ahead. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? So now it's like, what are we going to do? Look at where surrounded. What are we going to do now? You understand? Because in his mind, he say, we're going to die this day. <laughs> That's his mindset. So you have to really picture yourself of being there. We're going to die today. Now it's like today we go to it's the same thing that the servant of Elisha is asking. What are we going to do? It's the same thing when we go to camp. You understand? When we, it seems like, you know, these people can just gather themselves together and beat the hell out of us. Guess what? We're not alone. Understand that. We are not alone. Understand this thing. Go ahead. Watch this. And he, and he answered, fear not. For they that be with us are more than they that be with them. You see what he's telling? This is Elisha now telling Gehazi. They that be with us are more than they that be with them. What is Elisha saying? He's telling us, he's, he's giving him some heavy stuff. He says the people that are, the people, those that are, are, are with us, the army that is with us is more than they that be with them. Go ahead, watch this. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. You see what Elisha said? Elisha prayed to the Most High. He says, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. You understand? So in order for your eyes to be opened, guess what needs to happen? The Lord is the one that gives consent for, you to, for, for, for your eyes to be opened to see what this Bible is saying. You understand? Read. I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. Uh -huh. And the Lord 
opened the eyes of the young man. Read. And when he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. You see that thing? Elisha was surrounded by what? Was surrounded by a host. You understand? The angels. Elisha was surrounded by those angels and chariots. He says what? Horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. You see that thing? So these are angels that was with, that was with Elisha. So wherever Elisha went, he was surrounded by, by an army that nobody could see. But Elisha saw it. Elisha knew that they are there. They are all around. He knew that thing. So guess what? Because the servant, the servant, remember the servant, guess what? His faith was withering at this point because now he's scared. We're going to die today. You understand? So now uh, the Lord, uh, Elisha is praying to the Lord saying, listen, open his eyes, Father, that he may see that so that he's not, a, he's not scared. He's not afraid. So what was he doing? He was teaching him to what? He was teaching him faith. That you must have faith in the Lord. The Lord is with you. The Lord is always with us. You understand? The Lord said God is always with us. So in order for your eyes to be opened, guess what? But the Lord is not going to do that this day. The Lord is not doing that today. The, the, the angels are all around us, but you're not going to see them. You just have to read what we're, what we're reading in the scriptures and understand that, guess what? The way the Lord was with our forefathers back then, he is with us today. All we have to do is keep the commandments of the Mosa. Then we also will be able to see what the scriptures is saying and know how to apply, how to make sound decisions, the how not to stumble at basic things. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Luke 24. Luke chapter 24, we're going to start at verse 1. Luke 24 verse 1. Watch this. The book of Luke, chapter 24, verses 1. Go ahead. Now, upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning. Hold on. Read that part again. The book of Luke, chapter 24, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Now, upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning. Stop right there. Upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning. Guess what? This is Sunday. Okay, Sunday. Give me Genesis 1 and 5 because there's a lot of confusion about this. Okay, Genesis 1 and 5. Read it for me. The book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 5. Mm -hmm. And God called it, and God called the light day. Read. And the darkness he called night. Come on. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And the evening and the morning were the first day. The day begins at even, at even, at even when it's dark. Read again. The book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 5. Read. And God called the light day, and mm -hmm. the darkness he called night. Read. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Jump down to verse 8. The book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 8. And God called the firmament heaven. Mm -hmm. And the evening... And the morning were the second day. And the evening and the morning were the second day. Verse 13. The book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 13. Mm -hmm. And the evening and the morning were the third day. Jump down to verse 19. The book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 19. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Jump down to verse 23. Read. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Read verse 31. Read. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. Mm -hmm. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. And the evening and the morning was the sixth day. Genesis chapter 2 verse 1. The book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 1. Thus mm -hmm. the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. Read. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made. On the what day? On the seventh day. On the seventh day. On the seventh day. That's the Sabbath day. Go ahead. 
God ended his work which he had made. Read. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. You see that thing? He rested on the seventh day. That's the Saturday, Sabbath. You understand? So from Genesis 1, verse 5 on down, we know when the day begins, at even. Okay? At even. Now, go to Luke 24, verse 1 now. The book of Luke chapter 24, verse 1. Read. Now, upon the first day of the week. The first day. The first day of the week. That's what we read in Genesis 1 and 5. The evening and the morning was the first day. That's what today, that's what they call it Sunday. But that's the first day of the week in Genesis 1 and 5. Okay. When did it begin? Go back to Genesis 1 and 5 again. The book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 5. Read. And God called the light day, and the darkness mm -hmm. called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. The evening and the morning were the first day. So when did the first day begin? At even. The second day, when did it begin? At even. Okay? It doesn't say when the sun goes down. It says at even. Because Israel doesn't even get it when we try to make things easy to understand. They still don't get it. Go back to Luke 24 verse 1. The book of Luke chapter 24 verse 1. Read. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning. You see that thing? This is Sunday morning now. Sunday morning. Very early in the morning. Sunday morning. First day of the week. Sunday morning. He's telling you, very early in the morning. Go ahead. They came into the sepulchre bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. Okay, come on. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. Because the angel did it, read. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. They didn't find the, the, uh, the body of Christ because he had risen. You understand? And he didn't rise. He didn't, he didn't rise on Sunday. Like that's why they have resurrection Sunday. No. He rose on the third day. Okay, give me Matthew 12 real quick. There's no such thing as Resurrection Sunday. You'll never find it in the Bible. Okay, Matthew chapter 12, verse 8. Read that for me. The book of Matthew chapter 12, verse 8. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. You see that thing? The Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. That's the Lord's day. He resurrected on the Sabbath day. Not on Sunday. He resurrected on the Sabbath day. Now go back to Luke now, 24. Luke chapter 24 and verse, verse 4. The book of Luke chapter 24 verse 4. Come on. And it came to pass. As they were much perplexed, they about to behold. Two men stood by them in shining garments. Okay, come on. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living one among the dead? He said, no, no, they didn't say the living one. Read that again, come on. The book of Luke chapter 24 verse 5. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? Why are you seeking the living among the dead? Meaning what? They talk about Christ. Go ahead. He is not here. Mm -hmm. But he's risen. But he's risen. Okay, he's not here, he's risen. He's, that's why it says, why seek ye the living among the dead? That's why they are saying, the next verse says, he is risen. Go ahead. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee. You see that thing? It says, how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee. Go ahead. Saying, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of, the, of sinful men. The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men. Go ahead. And be crucified. And the third day rise again. And the third day rise again. Go ahead. And they remembered his words. They remembered his words, come on. 
and returned from the sepulchre and told all these things unto the eleven and to all the rest. And to the eleven, let's talk about the apostles and, all, and to all the rest, the followers of Christ. Remember now, Christ is resurrected now. Go ahead. It was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary, the mother of James, and other women that were, that were with him, which told these things unto the apostles. Okay, come on. And their words seemed to be, the book of Luke chapter 24, verse 11, and their words seemed to them as idle tales, mm-hmm. and they believed them not. You see that thing? It says, and their words seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. Guess what? So it is today. With the classes that go on a daily basis, guess what is going, is, is going on? It's like idle tales. It doesn't matter how many precepts we can bring out. Brothers, one ear out the other. Because to them, to you, is just idle tales. He says, and they believed them not. Okay, come on. Then arose Peter and ran unto the sepulchre. So now Peter, uh, the apostle Peter, he made a run for it. He ran unto the sepulchre, come on. And stooping down, he held the linen clothes laid by themselves and departed, wondering in himself at, the, at that which was come to pass. At that which was come to pass. Because when you, when you go to the book of um, Matthew and John, they give you more, a, a little more details. I'm not going to go into that today. Go ahead. And behold, two of them went that same day to the village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about three score four longs. Four longs. Go ahead. Four longs. Read. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. Now they are explaining the things which they saw, which had happened. Remember, Christ has risen the third day, meaning he rose up as he had said. Because he told them, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to be crucified and I'm going to rise again the third day. He told them these things. Some believed, some did not. Go ahead. The book of Luke, chapter 24, verse 15. And it came to pass. That while they com- they communed together in reason, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. So now as they are walking, Christ is coming among them. You understand? And he's walking with them now. Read. But the eyes were holding that they should not know him. You see that thing? Their eyes were holding. Meaning he closed their eyes that they could not recognize that it is him. He has risen. So they were not able to see him. They could not recognize him. Go ahead. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. You see that thing? Their eyes were holding that they should not know him. Guess what? What were this verse right here? Is that their eyes were holding that they should not know him. That's what's going on to our people today. They read the Bible, but they don't see what they are reading. They cannot see Christ. They read the old covenant. They read even they knew, but they still don't know him. You see that? Give me that in First John. We're coming back here. Yeah? Give me First John chapter 2. We're going to read verse 3. First John 2 verse 3. Watch this. First book of John chapter 2 verse 3. Read. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. You see that thing? We do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. So the reason why our people don't know Christ today, they see, they see the scriptures, they read the, the words that say Jesus Christ. Jesus, but they don't know him. Why? Because they refuse to keep the commandments. So don't think that it's just our people, our brothers and sisters out there in the Christian church, in Islam, or I won't mention Islam because they don't believe on the Messiah. But the point is, in the Christian church, our people, they don't believe on Christ. That's why they can't see him in the scriptures. They don't see Christ in the scriptures. From Genesis to Revelation, they don't see the Messiah. You understand? So because they don't, they refuse to keep the commandments. So guess what? In Israel, you have the same spirit all in Israel as well. They refuse to know him. They know of him because they hear, oh no, he's black and all of that, but they still don't apply the commandments. Guess what? It's difficult for them to see them, to see him. Go back to Luke 24 now. 
Luke 24, verse 16, because what did Christ do? He is withholding their eyes that they cannot know him. You see that thing? Watch this. Hold this. Give me the book of James, chapter 1, verse 18. Okay, James 1, verse 18. The book of James, chapter 1, verse 18. Mm -hmm. Of his own, will he, of his own. No, come on, come on. You are rushing. I don't understand why you are reading like this. Read verse 18 again. The book of James, chapter 1, verse 18. Of his own will beget he us no, with the no, word of no. truth. No, no, no. I don't know. You are rushing. I told you. Take your time. Read the verse again. Yes, sir. The book of James, chapter 1, verse 18. Of his own will beget he us. No. With the okay. Word of okay. Listen. Of his own will beget he us. Of his own will beget he us. Meaning what? This is the will of the Father for us to know Christ. Of his own will beget his own, not our own will, but his own will beget he us. Go ahead. Of his own will beget he us with the word of truth. With the word of truth. That's the commandments. Go ahead. That we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You see that thing? So now of his own will, he beget us with the word of truth. So because our people they don't believe in the word of truth. They don't believe in the commandments. So that's why now it's difficult for them to see the Messiah. They can't see him. Nor can they know him in the scriptures. You can read it. Psalms 40 verse 8. Okay. No, Psalms, Psalms 40 verse 7. I come in the volume of the book. They don't see it. They don't. You understand? They don't. They still don't see it. In Israel, you have the same spirits in Israel, but they will convince themselves that that's not me. They're not talking about me. The fact that you are saying that, yeah, we are talking about you. Okay? Go back to Luke 24. Luke 24, verse 16. I'll prove what I'm saying. Give me John 9. Because I know there's somebody in here that is saying, no, this is not talking about me. Watch this. John chapter 9, verse 39. This is what Christ said. Okay? Read it. The book of John, chapter 9, verse 39. Come on. And Jesus said, For judgment, I am come into this world. Mm -hmm. Read. That they which see, that they which see not, might see. That they which see not. So Christ is saying, For judgment, I am come into this world. That they which see not, he says, I'm coming for those that are blind. You understand? That they which see not, read on, might what? might see mm -hmm. read and that they which see might be blind because meaning those that think they see they are, the lord says i'm gonna blind you i agree you think you know i'm going to blind you. you're not gonna see what is written such as some of you up in here you think you know what did christ say read verse 39 again the book of john chapter 9 verse 39 mm -hmm. and jesus said for judgment I am coming to this world. Read. That they would see, that they would see, that they would see not, might see. Read. And that they would see, might be blind. And they would think they know something, they are going to be blinded. Next verse, go ahead. And some of the Pharisees, which were with him, heard these words and said unto him, are we blind also? You see what they're asking? Are we blind also? No, he's not talking about me. Okay. Guess what? You'll always have that wicked Negro who's always thinking, oh no, he's not talking about me. Guess what? The fact that that's what you are thinking and that's how you feel because a lot of you, you rely on your feelings. Okay. It says, are we blind also? The fact that they are asking that question, they think that class does not pertain to them. Guess, listen what Christ says. Next verse. Go ahead. Jesus said unto them, mm -hmm. if you were blind, you should have no sin. You see that thing? If you were blind, if you can admit that I'm blind, you, your sins are going to be wiped away. That's what he's saying right there. Meaning don't make excuses. Don't pat yourself on the back. That's what he's saying. Right? But now he say, we see 
Therefore, your sin remaineth. You see that thing? But because you say you know something, it says now your sins remain. That's the point. But I, you will always have that clever Negro who thinks they know too much. Guess what? You are you falling under this lot. This, this, you're going to fall under this category right here. What we just read. The scriptures is undefeated. You can deny it however you want. You can try to twitch like a robot. It's not going to change what is written until you repent. Watch this. Go back to Luke 24 now. Luke 24, verse 17. Now read verse 16 again. Then we're going to jump. The book of Luke, chapter 24, verse 16. Read. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. You see that thing? But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. Who's doing that? The Lord is doing that. Jump down to verse 25 now. Watch this. The book of Luke, chapter 24, verses 25. Come on. Then he said unto them, O mm -hmm. fools, and slow of heart to believe Wait. all that the prophets have spoken. You see what he's telling them? He says, O fools and slow of heart. Meaning what? You fools, and he says they are slow bellies. Okay? To believe all that the prophets have, have, have spoken. Meaning they don't believe. How can you ignore the things that the prophets have spoken? Because the prophets, they prophesied about Christ. Moses talked about it. Isaiah talked about it. David talked about it and so forth. Go ahead. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? Read. And beginning at Moses. And beginning at Moses. He began at Moses. Go ahead. And all the prophets. And all the prophets, what the prophets have said. Read. He expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. You see that thing? He expounded. He expounded in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. You understand? What is written in the law and in the prophets. Read. And they drew nigh unto the village. Come on. Whither they went. Mm -hmm. And he made as though he would have gone further. Read. But they constrained him saying, abide with us. For it is a toward, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent, and he went in to tarry with them. So now, read verse 29 again. The book of Luke, chapter 24, verse 29. Mm -hmm. But they constrained him, saying, abide with us. So now for they are telling him, listen, don't stay with us, because he wanted to go past. He wanted to, because he wanted to just keep going. And they wanted to stop. But it says, listen, abide with us. You understand? Abide with us. They constrained him saying, abide with us. For it is toward evening. Because remember, it says very early in the morning. Don't forget now in verse 1. It says toward evening and the day he first spent. And he went in to tarry with them. Because the whole day, what was he doing? He was expounding unto them from Genesis. You understand? The first five books of Moses and all what the prophets had said. Because the New Testament wasn't written during this time. You understand? So the whole day, from Genesis all the way, all the prophets, he expounded unto them the things that was written about himself. Hmm. Read. Luke chapter 24 verse 30. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and brake gave to them now this is now christ now he says it came to pass as he said at meet with them he took bread and blessed it and break and gave to them that's what breaking that goes into the breaking of bread right but christ guess what he was doing christ was still this is this also goes into what yes it's physical food that was eating but it also goes into what understanding of the scriptures he was expounding to them he was giving them understanding when they were among him okay go ahead and their eyes were opened, mm -hmm. and they knew him. They and did he what? vanished out of their sight. Read that again, verse thirty-one. And they knew him. They did what? The book of Luke, chapter twenty-four, verse thirty-one. Go ahead. And their eyes were opened, and they knew him. You see that thing right there? Their eyes was open, and they knew him. So in verse thirty, guess what he was doing? He says he said, "At meet with them." And he took bread and blessed it and break and gave to them. He was breaking bread. 
So what was he doing? He was going into the scriptures and giving them the understanding. Some more. And as he was doing that, he says, their eyes was opened and they knew him. Verse 16, he will do, he withholding their eyes. You see that thing? He withholding their eyes that they were not able to recognize that it was him. Verse 31, he opened their eyes. They were able to see that it's him. Because what did he do for them to understand, for, for their eyes to be opened? Because he broke the scriptures down for them from Genesis and all the prophets. After he did that, that's when they knew him. That's when their eyes was opened. Because Christ, give me that in Psalms 40 verse 7. Psalms 40 verse 7. We touched on this during the Feast of Pentecost. Psalms chapter 40 verse 7. Read that. Psalms chapter 40 verse 7. Mm -hmm. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. You see that thing? I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. So what was he doing? He was expounding unto them himself. Because he comes in the volume of the book. From Genesis and all the prophets, it's all written of Christ. So from the day, from very early in the morning until in the evening, that's what he was doing. He, he, he went through the whole Bible. After he done that, guess what they did? That's when they figured, that's when they, they saw that this is Christ right here. So what is this going into? You're not going to know Christ if you don't read the old you don't, uh, you don't read the first five books. You don't read the prophets. You're not going to know Christ. It's impossible. Because in order for them to know him, guess what? He had to expound unto them the scriptures for them to know him. To know that it was him. Studying with the law and the prophets. You see that? He op their eyes was opened. Now, jump down to verse 45 now. Read verse 45. Luke chapter 24, verse 45. Come on. Hmm. Start of verse 44. Luke chapter 24, verse 44. Come on. And he said unto them, These are the words which I speak unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Go ahead. Then, then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. You see what Christ did? He says, then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. So he, ex he gave them understanding of the scriptures. You understand? He gave them understanding of the scriptures. And as he was doing that, our forefathers, was our the apostles, you understand? And the disciples, there was no saying, oh, this is too much. The class is going for long. Mm -mm. Jump up to verse 32 so we can see the spirit that there was rolling in. Read verse 32. Watch this. Luke chapter 24 verse 32. Go ahead. And they said one to another, did not our hearts burn within us? Mm. While he talked with us, by the way. Come on. And while he opened to us the scriptures. You see that thing? It says, did not our hearts burn within us? While he, while he talked with us, by the way. And while he opened unto us the scriptures, meaning what? They were glad for this thing. There was not in a hurry say, hey, we wish we could just be quiet. No. They were saying, listen, we want some more. That's why it says, did not our hearts burn within us? While he, what? while he talked with us, by the way, while he opened, he was giving them the understanding of the scriptures. Precept upon precept, Christ was doing. The whole day he was doing that. Precept upon precept. Line upon line, here a little and there a little. So they can know him. You see that thing? Then their eyes was open. Your eyes are not going to open. Give me that in Psalms now. I'm almost done. Psalms 119 verse, 9, verse 18. Psalms 119 verse 18. Because this is what David, this is David's prayer right here. Okay, Psalms 119 verse 18. This is what he asked the Mosai. Psalms chapter 119 verse 18. Read. Open thou mine eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. You see that thing? Open thou mine eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. The only way you are going to be able to behold wondrous things out of God's commandments, God's laws, you must be doing God's laws. It says, open thou mine eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. 
you're not going to see those wondrous things. So the mm. wondrous things, for, them, for you to get those wondrous things, the mysteries, the parables, the dark sayings, you're not going to receive those if you don't keep the commandments. Because keeping the commandments, guess what? That's the key for you to get the wondrous things. You're not going to get those wondrous things if you don't keep the commandments. It's not going to happen. Therefore, you're not going to know Christ. You are going to stumble about when the day begins. I have to, I have to beat the dead horse. You understand? Because Israel, they tend to have selective amnesia. Read, read verse 18 again. Psalms chapter 119, verse 18. Go ahead. Open thou mine eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. You see that thing? That I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. Jump down to verse 27. Verse 27. Make me to understand the way of thy precepts. So shall I talk of thy wondrous works. You see that thing? It says, make me to understand the way of thy precepts, which is the law, there it says, so shall I talk of thy wondrous things. Those wondrous things, they, come, they, they are what? They come out of God's laws. You understand? Jump down to verse 34 now. Watch this. Verse 34. Mm -hmm. Give me understanding, and I shall keep thy law. Yea, I shall observe it with my whole heart. You see that thing? I'm not going to be double-minded. You see what he's asking for? He says, give me understanding, a good understanding. Okay, it says, and I shall keep thy law. Yea, I shall observe it with my whole heart, steadfast in his understanding. Jump down to verse 73 now. Watch this. Verse 73. Mm -hmm. Thy hands have made me and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn thy commandments. You see what he's asking? Give me understanding that I may learn thy commandments. Okay, so I'm going to end the class right here. All praise to the most High God. Let's break bread in the honor of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for laying his life down for us. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had stopped saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the Mosai hand for that class. All praises to the Mosai.